Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. In this week, we're going to take a look at the calendar service that's built into OS X Server. Now, most of us use calendars and contacts and things like that on all of our devices. And if you've got Apple products, you probably use iCloud to make those things happen. And iCloud works great for most people. But there are times when you might want to have more control over your calendars and contacts. Maybe you want to keep them private. You don't trust that information being in the cloud. Or you want to run your own calendar or contact server just to be able to uh, keep, keep on top of those things. Or maybe even you want to run a joint calendar or contacts um, uh, uh, database that your users then can connect to and share together and have that information sync back and forth. And so if you want to do that, uh, OS X Server does have uh, those services built in. So in some ways, you could have your own cloud, so to speak, with those two services. So today what we're going to do is look specifically at the calendar service and show you how to set that up and how it works so that you can use that to connect it to all of your various devices. Now this is the calendar service right here. And you see we've got two main areas. We've got the access area and the settings area. And uh, then we have the location and resources down here. And so what I'm going to do is walk you through uh, each and every one of those. You can see the service is off right now, and the status shows that it's offline. Now that'll change once we turn uh, the actual calendar service on. So let's look at this permissions area, which, again, this area is new uh, in Yosemite Server in that it's got uh, the ability to fine-tune who can have access to what within the service itself as opposed to behind the scenes. So if I just click on Edit over here, you'll notice that I can allow connections from either all users or only some users. And so if I switch it to only some users, then it allows me to t uh, type in who I want to have access. So let's assume for a minute that I only want my work group to have access to this service. If that's the case, I would just start typing in work group, and you can see the work group shows up here. And so I can select that specific group. Uh, but there's also network accounts, network services, network users. Uh, I can kind of fine tune it down to what I want. And let's just say work group is what I want. So if I put that, that means that only the people that are in the work group will have access to the calendar service. And I can also do specific users if I want to. Uh, it's up to me on how I want to set that up. But I can really fine tune the access at the user level. Now, I'm just going to go back and say all users in my case. Now, I can also fine tune where pe uh, when people are connecting from particular networks. So I can also fine tune the networks. I can say any network, which would be what you would want uh, you know, for your uh, remote access and all of that. I can say private networks. Or I can say only some networks. And if I do that, uh, it'll include private networks, and then I can put in uh, any other networks I want, right? Networks from this Mac, or I can create a new network. So if you're set up where you've got multiple networks uh, under one roof, and you want to have access from those particular networks only, you can actually limit the networks where people will have access to your calendar server. So again, it kind of gives you um, fine-tuned control on how that works. So we're going to go back to all networks here, just say cancel. We're going to leave it alone for right now. Now, in the settings area, uh, we've got a couple of settings here. Uh, the first is we've got enable invitations by email. And what this does is it is allows you to send email invitations. And it's designed specifically to work really with the mail service that's built into server. In fact, if I just uh, check this box here, it's going to take me through a wizard uh, that's going to ask me to set this up and configure. You can see it asks to enter the uh, email address of an account. Uh, that the server can use to send calendar invitations. And it need, probably should be a dedicated uh, server email account. In other, in other words, one that you set up over here. And so they kind of give an example, right? You know, com.apple.calendarserver at server.toddoltoff.com because that's what we have set up. And so you can put that in there, and then that will basically uh, look for invitations and continue to ping the server. Now, if you choose to put an external email address in here, uh, I would recommend against it. Uh, as I've said in past screencasts, I had uh, this happen to me where I put in a, uh, my own email address in there, and it kept pinging my uh, email server so that my uh, provider thought I was getting uh, spammed, and so they shut off my email. And uh, it took me a little while to figure it out. I had to use a tool like Little Snitch to make that happen. So uh, that's I've got some screencasts on that uh, tool. It's a great firewall wire tool, and it allows you to see who's phoning home and all of that. And so uh, that did kind of mess me up. So I just want to let you know that you really want to use this in tandem with the actual mail service. So I'm just going to say next and leave that alone. And then what it has you do is set up your um, IMAP or POP server here for the email where you're putting in your username and password 
uh, whether you're using SSL or not. And then if you go next, you have the outgoing mail server uh, stuff as well that you would put in. And if I say next, then it's going to set this up for me and it's going to use this email to look for email uh, reservations. What I'm going to do is cancel this because I don't need it, but I wanted to walk you through that to have you see what that looked like. So again, if you're not using the mail service, I would leave this off and just let that go. Now we also have a push notifications area here, which we have not set up push notifications yet. Uh, this allows your data to be pushed uh, whenever any changes are made to your calendar. It's going to push those changes to all of your devices. And so this is a really nice service to have so that you don't have to refresh and, uh, and do, uh, do this manually. And so we're going to come in here and say edit. And we're going to enable push notifications. And so what it asks you to do is to put in your Apple ID and your password, and then it's going to give you a certificate for push, not push notifications with Apple. And so I'm going to go ahead and put that information in here. So it's whatever your Apple ID is. And so once I have that in there, I would click Get Certificate. Now it's going to ping Apple's servers to create a certificate for me to enable those push notifications. And, uh, you know, depending on your bandwidth, it might take a little while. And so there we go. Now I've got the certificate. It says, uh, you know, it's got my Apple ID. It shows when it expires in a couple of years. And so I can come in here to renew it later if I need to do that or if I want to change it, I can do that as well. So I'm going to say done on here. And so now you can see push notifications is enabled. And I've really enabled push notif notifications now for all my different devices. If I was to come back up here to server, and go into settings, you can see now push notifications is enabled here as well. So doing it once for one service enables it for all the services you've got uh, on your server. All right, now that we've got that set up, we do have this area down here for locations and resources. And this really comes in handy if you're running a business and you've got rooms that people need to book for meetings and you've got uh, resources or devices that they can also check out for those meetings. For instance, like projectors or um, computers or things like that. And the locations uh, is, like I said, different offices or rooms so that people can schedule those on your calendar so you know when those rooms are booked or whether they're open or not. And so that as people go to check to see if rooms are open, they can see the ones that they can access and the ones they can't. So in our case, again, I'm looking at it as a home server. So let's just uh, click the plus here. And so now I can add a new location. You notice I can do a location or I can do a resource. So in this case, let's do a location. And the one I like to do is, let's say, living room. So I'm going to you know, check out my living room because everything happens there. Now I can actually put in an address if I want to, uh, to, to make that work. So I can say one infinite loop. There it is right there, one infinite loop. And you notice that now it zooms in and shows kind of where the location of this particular room is. And so that's a new feature that's been added into Calendar Server is that you can actually put the location in and it interfaces with maps to show you where it's at. And so I'm just going to leave that there. I can put a delegate in as well, and that's someone who can view and manage the resources using Calendar. So if you've got somebody uh, in the office that you want to manage these things, you could actually put their name in there. And then in scheduling, you can say accept it if free, decline if busy, or what you can say is you can set, have a setting for it. You can accept all invitations. You can accept all invitations if free, accept if free, or decline if busy. You can require delegate approval before somebody accepts an invitation. So in other words, uh, you could have someone who's monitoring the rooms and the devices, and they approve it or not uh, before any invitation gets, uh, gets sent through. Or you can decline invitations if busy or decline all invitations. So this is a new addition that gives you fine-tuned uh, access to figure out how you're going to handle the invitations that get sent. So we're going to leave it uh, at the default, accept if free, decline if busy. And then you can say accept group. And so uh, invitations from members of this group are always going to be accepted no matter what. So if you got a CEO or somebody who really needs the room, whenever they want, uh, they get uh, privileged access, you can put their name in there. And then anytime they do it, it's automatically accepted. So I'm just going to leave it like this. There's my living room. Uh, I'm going to say create. And so now it's created this uh, location of living room. Let's go ahead and do one for uh, resources as well. So we're going to say resource. And so you notice it changes. Now we've got a projector and we don't have a uh, location on here. And let's say in my house, we're going to say this is, let's say, the Xbox One. All right. So everybody fights over the Xbox. So I'm going to put that in there. Uh, again, I can do the same thing. Put a delegate, say, if accept if free, decline if busy, or accept if uh, accept a particular group. I'm going to leave it like that so that that way pe uh, people in my family can actually check out the Xbox so no one's fighting over it. And we're going to say create. And so now I've got that there. So I've got my Xbox One. I've got my living room there. I've got everything set up. If I ever want to edit it, I can just highlight it and click on the pencil, and it brings up the screen here to edit it. I'm going to say cancel. 
So now that I've got all, everything set up and everything's ready for my calendar service, I'm going to go ahead and throw the switch here. And it's going to say, do you want to allow access from the internet? Because it's going to open the port on my base station. If you have a base station attached, I'm going to say allow. And as you can see, now that I've thrown the switch, the status is available on the local network at server.local. And there it goes. Now it's switched over to my actual server because it's reachable over the internet. I wanted to show you the, how that works, that when Apple basically does its reachability uh, test, it will come back and let you know if your server is reachable on the internet or only on your local network. And so that changed over. That means that the port's open and everything's ready to go. And if I go back over here to reachability, uh, it's showing my services that are available, and you'll see calendar service shows up there. Now, this has been a little quirky. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work well. If you hit the refresh button here, it'll test the services again, but I wanted to show that to you. Let me just uh, click done, and then let's go back into the calendar service. So now that we've got calendar all set up and ready to go, what I want to do now is I'm going to show you on a remote machine how you can set it up and access some of these locations and resources. Okay, here we are over on a remote computer. I'm screen sharing into this computer. And what you want to do to set up calendar is there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can do it within the calendar app itself or you can do it through system preferences. So here I am in system preferences and what you want to do is go to the internet accounts section here. And on the internet accounts section you want to go ahead and uh, click the plus here to add a new account. You want to add an other account. And then you want to add an OS 10 server account and say create. And so this is going to bring a drop down here that has you enter your server address. So uh, you can see here I've got my local server that I could click on there, or I can enter my server address. And so for those of you who want to do that, it would just be, you know, server, whatever you set up. Like that. And so you put in your server address and say continue. And then it's going to ask you um, for your name, your account, and your password. And so I'm just going to put, I'll just put my name in here. Then you want to put in your account name, which would be your short name, and then your password. And then you say set up. And what it's going to do is it is attached to the server and it's going to automatically say, okay, here are the services that I find available on the server. It finds calendars and reminders because those are connected. And so I can say, all right, go ahead and add those. I'll say done. And what it's going to do is add these two services to my list and it's adding it to the calendar. And so there I've got my server services set up right there. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to shut this down and let's go ahead and take a look at the calendar application. And here we are in calendars and you notice that we've got this OS 10 server area added here and I've got my OS 10 server calendar. So this is the calendar app on my server. Okay, now let's go ahead and add a uh, an event and let's just see how this works. So let's say on uh, Tuesday here, I'm going to double click, I'm going to add an event and I'm going to call the event, you know, Xbox Night. Okay, there's my Xbox Night. I got that ready to go. Okay, so that's set. Now let's say I want to add a location. Now if you remember, I have the location living room. And there it is right up there, living room right here. And so I'm going to click on that. You notice there it says it's open. It's got to check there. It says living room's open. It's all set. If I highlight this, you can see I can copy the location. But I've got living room there. That's where I want to have the event. And so I've got, you know, different invitees that I could add. So I can invite uh, somebody else. Let's just say I'm going to invite, um, you know, let's say I invite myself. I'll send one to me. I'm going to invite myself. So there we go. You can see I'm available, so I've been invited. I could add other invitees as well. Uh, I can also just check uh, availability if I wanted to do that, which would, if I did that, it would check the availability on my calendar if I want to do that. You can see there's the living room. There's myself as a... Uh, invited. I'm also the organizer and it shows that yeah this time frame is fine. I've got that all ready to go. It's actually going to be Xbox morning based on the time that I've got but you can see that all invitees are available and the space is available as well. So that's one way that I can check and then I can just say send because I'm all set and ready to go. And so now what I've done is sent an invite uh, for that. If I just uh, again double click on it get it to come up. I've sent an invite for it. It's at one infinite loop. You can see that it's already got the uh, map on there ready to go. Uh, it's going to be at the living room at this address and I've, I've sent this out to my invitees. And so the other person then would get the invite, can accept it, and then I get the green check mark that everything's okay and they've accepted that event. As a matter of fact, on the side here you can see I've got a plus one there. Let me just click on that. Since I sent it to myself, you can see here I've got the invitation. It says that it was accepted. Everything's good. I can say okay. And so now everything's ready to go. Our uh, event is happening. It's been accepted by myself. 
and the, the event is happening. So that gives you an idea of how the uh, calendar application works, um, and it works pretty well. It allows you to work just with a full function calendar just like you would if you were using iCloud. Now one more thing I wanted to point out, and that is that when you set up calendars by users, basically each user has their own private calendar. Those calendars aren't shared across all of your uh, different devices. And so if you wanted to have a shared calendar that everybody in your company would use, then the best thing to do would be to come in here and actually create a shared calendar. And I would actually just name this calendar, you know, shared calendar like that. And then basically add a, add a password, a username and password, um, put it as services only as opposed to local only. And I would add the shared calendar account and then have your users log into the same account and then that way everybody is sharing the same calendar information back and forth. So that's just kind of a shortcut on how to do that if you wanted one corporate calendar that everyone was sharing. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.